Hi, in this video we're going to show you a tool you could use to monitor changes to files on your hard drive. Um, you could do it for an entire drive or a specific folder. So it's a free download. It's called Folder Changes View. It'll be a zip file. You just need to extract it and run the executable so there's nothing to install. So once you have it unzipped, just double click it. And it's going to want to ask you what base folders you want to monitor. You could do more than one if you put in a list here. Uh, so you could do this, you know, C colon for the whole drive, or I'm going to do this F drive here with this confidential files folder. Then you have all these options here, you know, for monitor subfolders, summary mode, exclusions, uh, minimum and maximum file size to display, file types and file names. So I'm just going to leave the defaults here and click OK. So now we have the folder loaded here, and it's uh, already monitoring. So you can see you could stop it, you know, start and stop, so it's already been started. Then you have some other options here you know, for putting the icon in the system tray, sort on every update, always on top, change the base folder, uh, filters, show grid lines, mark on even rows, choose columns if you want to have you know, less columns showing if this is too much information for you. And then you could also do some configurations and exports once you get some data here. All right, so here's the folder we have monitoring here. So let's open this codes file, for example, here. We'll add another code here. Save it. You can see we've got this codes text file, modified count, created, deleted, that type of thing. So we'll make a new file here. Let's keep text documents for the sake of simplicity. Let's call this one test. So we have our created count for test, the folder location, extension, the owner, which is the owner logged in here. Uh, event time, file size, modify time, create a time, attributes, like that. And now let's say we delete it. Deleted count is one, so I'll change that there too for the same file. All right, now let's go back into codes and make one other change here. Save it. Now we have the modified count two, and the first event time, last event time, modified time, creator time, just like before. All right, so now we're going to log in with a different user. So Sarah's a shared computer. So now we'll have Cindy edit this file here, put in the code, save it, and we'll also have Cindy make a file here. Call it Cindy, and then we'll modify it there. And then we'll delete this notes. Okay, go back to Todd here. Okay, so we have the Cindy file. So the created we created it, then we modified it, then the notes file, we deleted it. And I can see the owner for Cindy on her file is updated here. But even though she changed some of the other files, like the codes, it's still going to show the original Todd owner. So just keep that in mind. It's not going to show you who changed the file or who deleted the file, unfortunately. It'll just show you uh, file owner information. OK, so now I'm going to go offline here. I'm going to access this computer over the network. And then I'll create a new file and be right back. OK, so I made this file called network file via the network. From a different computer. So you got the created count, modified count, renamed count, since it was uh, called new file or new text file to begin with. So then I changed it to network file. So that's why it says renamed count. Shows the path. But the user is still Todd, the owner of this computer, even though it was over the network. It's not going to show uh, the username of that network computer. Just It'll only show the uh, usernames if it's on the same computer, if that person creates a file, if that makes sense. So that might be kind of a bummer for some people. We can see it has the same information, just like that. And now if you want to take this information, let's say let's highlight all the items here. Save selected items. We can make it overwrite this file. Save it as a text folder here or text file. So it just gives you a rundown here of everything that was selected. You could save your configuration if you want to load it later. 
Uh, if you want to do an HTML report, let's highlight everything again. Like so. There's something that you could print out pretty easily. And then you could stop monitoring, clear all items if you want to kind of start over. Open your recent configuration if you saved one. Copy. Explorer copy. Let's see what that does. So that'll just copy the file, and then you can paste it wherever. Copy file name, select all, and then usual options, which we saw already. So that's the basics right there about how it works. Like I said, I wish it showed who uh, modified the uh, files. You know, like I said, it'll do it when somebody creates a file, if it's on the same local computer, not over the network, but it's not going to uh, show the name of somebody who modified the file, just the uh, date and time which is kind of a bummer, but, you know, it's a cool little program and it's free, so still might be worth checking out. So I'll put a link in the description and you can download it for yourself and see how it works for you. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. Mm -hmm.